Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and today we're going to continue torturing this compact computer because it lied to us. And if you like watching some crazy Mac heads suffer through some questionable late 90s PCs, then I'd hope you consider subscribing to the channel. Now, if you haven't seen the last video, this PC actually works. However, if you want to catch up, I'll put a link in the video description and in the corner here. But this is running Windows 98 from a very suspect Seagate hard drive, which is probably on its last legs. So what I'd like to do is replace that hard drive with a solid state equivalent. We have a blue SCSI version 2 here, which should do that perfectly. However, this machine does not have built-in SCSI. Instead, it just has IDE. However, I have a number of SCSI cards, so hopefully one of these will work with Windows 98. Thankfully, I left the case off of this thing because I'm lazy, so I can easily access the inside of this thing and try out one of these SCSI cards. And you better be compatible with one of those SCSI cards, or else. And although this horrible, dirty, compact keyboard is what I was using previously, and no, I'm too lazy to clean that up, I did find this a few years ago at a thrift store. This is a more modern compact keyboard, but it was brand new. So I think we'll be using this instead so I don't have to wash my hands every five minutes. Oh, that's just as cheap as the original. All right, this modem was sitting in the PCI slot and we won't be needing that. So we could take that out and now we can play a game of SCSI roulette. Which one of these SCSI cards will work in this PC? Well, we have an Adaptech brand. We have a Domex brand, although this doesn't have an internal connection, just an external. So I think we'll skip that one. And then we have this one, which has a variety of connectors on it. Uh, ooh, 4K. Wow, that's high resolution for a SCSI card. Well, I have more experience with these Adaptech cards. They seem to be pretty universal. So I'm going to try this one first and we'll see what happens. And I unplugged this floppy cable, but <laughs> we're not using that right now. So I'm going to leave it unplugged and I'm sure that won't come back to haunt me later. Now I do have IDE to compact flash adapters, but I want to try out this blue SCSI, especially since we're putting a SCSI card in there already. This has worked remarkably fast on some Power Macintosh machines I've used. So I'm curious to see how it will perform on a maybe okay PC. Oh, it turned on itself. Oh, I don't think I reconnected the... <laughs> A little ribbon cable that goes from the power cord to the uh, main board. Okay, it's a weird side effect. I would have not expected it to turn itself on like that. That scared me a little bit. All right, so let's see if that hard drive is still working. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh-oh. I wonder if this keyboard works. It was new, but... Okay, so it can't find a floppy drive, which is fine, because I've removed it. What are you farting at me for? Come on. Do PC stuff. <laughs> Keyboard or system unit error. Uh-oh. Okay. Come on. All right, so I plugged the panel back in, and I... Again, it turns on by itself again. You are a weird, cursed machine. And I plugged the floppy drive back in. So maybe we'll be a bit happier now. Hard drive is making questionable noises. And boot. The hard drive sounds a bit happier. Any day now. All right, there it goes. It sees the SCSI controller, and I didn't even have to install any drivers. All right, let's see if I could figure out how to format this SCSI hard drive. I guess this is a December video now? SCSI Voodoo knows no bounds, so hopefully this totally legitimate CD will help us out. Oh yeah! <laughs> Ooh, a SCSI tutor! Understanding SCSI. Alright, cool. So we have a bunch of SCSI programs here now that we installed that He's a software. Drive preparer sounds about right. Cannot find a disk. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's uh, something that will just tell us like what's connected. Okay, so we have the host adapter and what it thinks is a CD-ROM drive. 
which is our blue SCSI. So we might have to do some configuring. All right, so I put a few different disk images on that SD card. And if this doesn't work, I'll try and change the SCSI cable. Let's see if it's any different now. Nope, <laughs> it still thinks I have uh, just one. Let's try another SCSI cable. Well, that's new. Hey, there it is. There's our four gigabyte SCSI disk image on the blue SCSI version two. And it looks like this little Adaptech Easy Wizard has found it for us. Good job, wizard. Let's name this Compaq. What the hell, Norton, you idiot? Let it go. Congratulations! Your hard disk was successfully prepared and is now ready for use. Hey, look at that. It found the other CD too. This is supposed to be the compact restore disk, which I guess we have to make a boot disk for. Oh yeah, okay. What? The, what? Who, who cares? So let's do a quick restore. Yeah, I, I, there's, there's a floppy in there, buddy. What, do you want me to wait or something? Okay. Yes. So the CD that we're actually making the boot disk from is actually a CD image on the blue SCSI. So I'm not sure if this floppy boot disk that we're making here will understand that we have a SCSI card and all that stuff. I doubt it will, but I guess there's only one way to find out. And I'll probably end up burning a CD of the restore disk if worse comes to worse. All right, let's restart. All right, it's reading the floppy. All right, it sees the IDE drive, but I'm not sure if it has any idea that there's a SCSI drive in this thing because of the adapter card and all that stuff. And it's not doing anything. It probably wants a CD in the disk drive. So let's make it happy. It just so happens I have a brand new CDR here. So might as well use this and burn a disk of that recovery image and see if that wants to work. Mmm, brand new CDR. Ooh. All right, so I have another perfectly legitimate CD. This is the restore disk, so we're going to put it in the system here. And see what it does. Okay, it's much happier now. Maybe I should unplug the hard drive. So I unplugged the regular hard drive that was making all that noise before. So we have nothing plugged into the IDE bus except for the CD-ROM drive. I'm just curious if it's gonna see that SCSI drive. Probably won't, but who knows. <laughs> Cannot continue, and I can't even read the damn error code. Error code PQCFG001. Hard disk is too small, or not existing. All right, so what I ended up doing was skipping this restore CD. Although I made a nice label for it and it would have included all the drivers and programs and bloatware and such, I decided to skip it. That's because I didn't want to use the built-in IDE hard drive on here and I didn't have a large enough compact flash card to do a full restore. I wanted to use the blue SCSI. To do that, I would need to add a SCSI card to this computer. And unfortunately, this CD does not have any drivers or assumptions of anything SCSI related because this machine never shipped with a SCSI card built into it. So I just did a standard install of Windows 98 and that worked fine. After a bit of noodling, I actually had to go through three different SCSI cards because I didn't realize that the SCSI cards I was using previously, although they worked, they were not bootable. So I had to have a SCSI card with the BIOS thingamajig that would actually have the ability to make the drive bootable and for the PC to boot off of that. 
However, I simply couldn't have done this without my friends Mike and Chris from the channels Mike's Mess and Retrotech Chris respectively. They know much more about this PC stuff than I do, so a huge thanks goes to them. If you want to see some of the unfiltered shenanigans that went on to make this PC work, please check out the link in the video description and consider subscribing to their channels. Here's just a quick sample of the fun we had getting this system to work. Oh my. What All right, you changed it to black and white. <laughs> you changed it to two colors. <laughs> you dork. <sure. laughs> Browse the internet in two colors. Oh, this God. is glorious. You need to fix your website, Steve. You should be supporting two color mode. I know. <laughs> so now, after all of that, we're all set. So now we could use our machine with our blue SCSI. And I found the matching compact mouse that goes with this keyboard that I also found at the thrift store at the same time. So we are using a new old stock keyboard and mouse. And they work quite nicely. So there's that SCSI card. We're using an Adaptech. 2940 and this is seeing our blue SCSI. I also have some CDs there, but you see it sees that correctly and now we're going to boot into Windows 98. All right, so now our PC is working. If I go to properties here, you could see we have our authentic AMD 384 megabytes of memory and we have all the graphics drivers and such installed. And to celebrate that, we installed Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is one of my favorite games. And we need the CD. All right, all right, hold on. I know there's a no CD patch, but I have a CD here, so might as well use it. We have too many optical drives, it's confused. Oh yeah, this takes me back. So we were playing a game on the stream. Let's resume that. There we go. And you know, it's running pretty well. I actually played this game for the first time on a similar spec AMD system. We had an E-Machines 333 back in the day. So not too much of a difference. Have you ever played this game? Let me know in the comments section. I find that the first and second release were the, the better ones that I've ever played. Oh, we're getting some weird graphics uh, things here. That's odd. Now, although I do love that game, Unreal Tournament is something that I'd also like to try out on this machine. This is the Game of the Year edition. Unfortunately, the original CD that I have is quite scratched up, so we won't be using this. Thankfully, the blue SCSI lets me mount CDs easily. I can just use disc images. So I have both discs of the Game of the Year edition here. I should only need the one, but we're going to install that. All right, so the game was installed successfully. Let's see if it'll work. Detecting 3D video devices. All right, it says that uh, it's compatible with newer video cards like the ATI Rage 128, Matrox G400, and so on. So the card inside this machine, if this sticker is to be believed, is an ATI Rage LT Pro chipset that is built into the motherboard. Now we do have a RAM expansion slot on the motherboard. It's not filled in but we may get better performance if we put in a PCI graphics card. And in fact, I have a Matrox G450, I believe it is. I got this at VCF Midwest for all of $3. So uh, if this card doesn't perform well, maybe in the future we'll check that out. But for now, let's just click next. So this identifies as a Rage LT Pro AGP 2X. So we'll click next and it uh, chose those settings. Let's see how it runs. I also have this uh, ATI Rage XL card, but I'm not sure if that's too much of an improvement over the built-in card on this system. Pre-caching. This opening is always so dark. It's uh, sort of stuttering here. Oh boy. Yeah, let's go to preferences. That's at 640 by 480. Oh God. Uh, let's just set everything to medium, huh? Also getting some weird artifacts on the screen. I don't know what's going on with that. That was happening in the other game as well. Hope the caps aren't going on this board. Oh boy. All right, well, let's see how this runs. <laughs> All 
right. Oh yeah, we got this line down the screen here and here. I don't know what that's going on here. I don't think it's a driver issue. Be lucky if we get past 20 frames per second. So let's put our FPS counter here. We're at, uh, what, what does it say? Oh God. I mean, it's playable, but this is just a 1v1 map. If this were anything more intense, I, I don't think it would be running nearly as smooth. Oh, where is this guy? Oh, this is bad. I mean, it says 140. That is so not correct. This is more like in the teens, I would guess. I just don't know why it's not showing this correctly. So let's download something that will give me more information about this graphics card. I'm curious how much memory is on board. Apparently, this Everest program should be able to give us some information about the graphics card. I've never used this program before. <laughs> it's not finding much about the video card here. Unless, uh, DirectX, here we go. <laughs> Two megabytes of video memory. Two! Oh my goodness, no wonder it's running like garbage. It appears Compaq sold a four megabyte VRAM module back in the day. I don't have that, but I have a similar one that I took from my beige Power Mac G3. The first iMac G3s also use the same module. I think this is either a four megabyte or eight megabyte module. So let's see if it'll work in this PC. Okay, so that's the graphics card slot I was referring to there, that little beige rectangle. And we should be able to put a video memory module in there and hopefully increase the performance of the graphics card of this system. Unfortunately, this module is too fat. It will not fit in that slot because it has memory modules on both sides. Well, after consulting with my life coach, Sean of Action Retro, he said to just shove it in there and it should probably work. So let's try that. All right, well, we might as well turn it on. What's the worst that could happen? Oh no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think I had the SCSI card seated all the way because I ripped out the motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. It's always reassuring when that sound stutters on startup. All right, let's <laughs> see if this says anything different. I'm very curious. Ah, it still shows the two megabytes. Damn. All right, well, unfortunately, that memory module is not going to fit in there. Oh, boy. I think I'm going to wrap it up for part two. It's unfortunate that that video memory module will not fit in that slot, and that's the only one I have. So I don't think we're gonna get too much farther with the integrated graphics on this system. But I do have some other cards. I have this ATI XL card. This is a Rage XL, rather. And uh, then I have this Matrox card that I picked up from VCF Midwest. So I'm curious if those will give this any more of a performance increase if they survived falling on the floor. But I also have a promise I kept to myself. I wanted to see if I could put a super disk drive in this computer. And well, I did come across one. Here's a SCSI one. And here's an IDE one. And here's a USB one. And this is a super disk 240 megabyte drive. So I wonder how many of these the system will support at the same time. <laughs> Stay tuned because we'll find out one way or another. But that's about it for now. Please consider subscribing to the channel. That way you'll be informed when we play around with this thing next. And I'll catch you right here next time on PC Mac 84. Really got to stop doing that.